When you go to the airport these days, they tell you when to remove your shoes and your belt, which line to stand in, what you can take on the plane. They sometimes take your wallet, your medication, and your jewelry. They always take your nail clippers. But do they make us any safer? The man who helped create the Transportation Safety Administration, which we know as the TSA, is no longer so sure. I welcome to Freedom Watch Congressman John Micah, Republican of Florida, along with Fred Gavalt. Congressman Micah, excuse me, Fred is the executive producer of a documentary about the TSA, which you've got to see, called Please Remove Your Shoes. Congressman Micah, does the TSA actually keep us any safer? Well, it probably does, but um, that's in spite of itself and in spite of its size. It's grown to over 60,000 employees uh, from 16,500 screeners, uh, has a huge bureaucracy, and is now scheduled to increase uh, uh, by another 5,000 employees, and the performance level reports I get back are are pretty dismal, so uh, we've got some problems. Why, Congressman, did you refer to this as your bastard <laughs> child? I'm <laughs> quoting you. you. You were instrumental yes. in the Bush administration in creating this thing. It's now out of control. How did that happen? Well, uh, what we did is we tried to put some limits. We also tried to get the private sector involved with government oversight, government rules and regulation, and then uh, also auditing the system rather than the government being the administrator, the operator, and the overseer. Uh, we, we set that up, but TSA has done everything they can to sub subvert that process and grow it bigger uh, rather than better. So unfortunately, it doesn't perform well, and we're spending a lot of money, and it needs uh, corrections. We've tried to put the brakes on it in the last three years. Of course, right. we don't have control of the Congress. It's just mushroomed from uh, a cap of 48,000. Now it's going to be 65, 66,000 with thousands of administrators, right. 3,500, just a few miles, within a few miles of where I'm standing. Fred, you uh, produced a documentary, Please Take Your Shoes Off or Please Remove Your Shoes. You went all over the country in all kinds of airports and you filmed the TSA in action. Question, the TSA is the government. It's subject to the Constitution. Does it respect freedom of speech? Does it respect your right to be free from search and seizure? Or does it do whatever the heck it wants, even though it's taken an oath to uphold the Constitution? Well, you hit it on the head, Judge. Uh, it does whatever it wants. Uh, but frankly, you know, if you're, if you're going to talk about the screeners at the airport, I don't think most of them have been educated about, uh, about the Constitution or even the local laws. What, 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 what are some of the outrages that you've seen that are documented in your film done by the TSA, the government that works for us as it claims it's keeping us safer? Well, I think of all the various uh, features of this agency, uh, perhaps the most pernicious, which uh, you don't necessarily see at the airport, is it's got an appalling appetite for deception. And I think that... Uh, uh, you know, they've got a large PR department, uh, but when it comes to spin, uh, misleading uh, the public, uh, they, ha they have no parallel in government. And perhaps the most uh, demonstrative example of that would be the uh, Secretary of uh, Homeland Security speaking for them after the attempted Christmas bombing. Uh, when she looked us all collectively in the eye on nas nationwide TV <laughs> and said, the system works. Congressman Micah, there thing has is, to be... I, I think for a while she believed it. I think she believed it as well. Congressman Micah, there has to be a better way. The government has to respect our liberties. The government can't punish us for speech. It can't deceive us. It can't take our property away from us. How about the airlines being responsible for their own safety? Has the government ever thought of that? Well, that's how we started out, actually, and we had a smaller screening force. But even then, the government was mired in trying to come up for rules. You got to remember, the government didn't ban box cutters. The government didn't have in place rules for the private screeners. So they were, even then, they couldn't get it right. But uh, this isn't just Fred and I criticizing their operations. I've got GAO reports. I have uh, independent authorities Got going Con in Congressman, looking at them. Uh, Congressman Micah, we have to go. Fred Gavalt, Congressman Micah, keep up the battle. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Big Thanks. spending and the plain truth after this.
Now time for socializing liberty when we hear from you online. Last week we asked you if America is a republic or an empire. 68% said a republic, 32% said an empire. Philip from Georgia said, how can any party or person justify a foreign policy that costs so much and is being paid for by loans from communist China? Good point. John from Georgia said, the Constitution founded the United States as a republic. Finally, William from Texas says, the USA is a former republic morphed post-Lincoln into an imperial oligarchy. That'll stir the pot. Now this week's question, will the Tea Party return the GOP to its Goldwater Reagan roots? Send your brief thoughts along with your location and the subject line, Tea Party Takeover, to freedomwatch at foxbusiness.com or our social networks on foxbusiness.com slash freedomwatch. Now here's our plain truth. Freedom Watch is your night watchman, keeping an eye on the government, and government has only grown since the last time you saw us. In the past few weeks, government, federal deficit spending for the fiscal year passed $1 trillion. The federal government's debt leapt $168 billion in a single day. That is the third largest one-day leap in the debt in all of American history. And anti-tax groups began the six-month countdown to the largest tax hike in American history, taking effect this coming January 1st. Today's guests have reminded us, though, that there is a movement afoot to roll back this seemingly endless expansion of the state. Freedom is not the exclusive possession of one party, one nation, or one ethnic group. It is our common inheritance as human beings. It is increasingly clear that the movement to restore liberty cuts across old party lines and unites us all, as no government ever can, no matter how much that government pretends to represent, to understand, and to satisfy all of our desires. No government can satisfy all of our desires. Only individual initiative and free choices can bring us happiness and prosperity. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next week. From New York, defending freedom. So long, America.